Vincent got locked in a room with no windows and only one massive door. There's a panel with several buttons on the left, and another one with a hint on it on the right. There's also a clock on the wall above the door. Which button should Vincent press to get out of the trap? The green triangle. The numbers on the panel represent hours. If you connect them on the clock face, you'll get a triangle. The door opened and Vincent got into a dimly lit hall. There, he saw one more door. But this time, both the lock and the key were hanging together on the same chain. But after examining this system for a couple of seconds, the guy understood he wouldn't get out this way. Why? The key has a different pattern. It won't fit in the lock. Vincent needs to look for another way to escape. Then Vincent notices a table standing in a dark corner. There's a piece of paper, a knife, and several inflated balloons lying on it. Vincent picks up the paper. It's a note. To get out of here, you must puncture a balloon with a knife. But if the balloon loses any air or bursts, you'll stay here forever. Vincent thought for a while, then he did something, and a hidden door opened in one of the walls. What did he do? He let the air out of one of the balloons. After that, he easily punctured it with a knife. Detective Marcus and another passerby became witnesses of a car accident. A man, hit by a minivan, was lying on the ground, unconscious. Marcus rushed to the nearest cafe to call an ambulance. When he got back, the passerby told him the man had turned onto his back but hadn't come to his senses. After looking at the scene for a couple of seconds, the detective said, You'd better return everything you've taken from this man. Why did he say so? When they saw the man first, only one button was buttoned on his suit jacket. But now, it's already two buttons. The passerby must have opened his jacket to look for the wallet and then buttoned it up incorrectly. Look at this picture and try to figure out who is an alien in disguise. It's the guy in the yellow shirt. He's eating a banana, but he hasn't peeled it before biting on it. He probably sees this fruit for the first time. Three famous detectives came to a coffee shop to discuss a tricky case. A waiter came up to them and asked, Does everyone want coffee? The first detective said, I don't know. The second detective answered, I don't know. And the third detective said, yes. Do you know what the first two detectives ordered? All the detectives ordered coffee. Each of them wanted to have this drink, but the first two couldn't know if it would be everyone's choice. If the first two detectives hadn't wanted coffee, they'd have simply said no. So when the third detective heard the replies of his colleagues, he figured out both of them wanted coffee. And since he was also going to take a cup, he said yes. Ralph, Willie, Amber, and Grace are in a museum room. Someone stole a priceless exhibit from this room several hours ago. Ralph, Willie, and Amber claim they have nothing to do with the crime. But the detective doesn't believe them. They all get arrested and taken to the police station. Only Grace, who hasn't answered the question, is free to go. Why? Grace is the detective. Janice was having her morning coffee in a cafe when she heard a car screeching to a halt, then loud shouting. She ran there and saw a man with his bicycle on the ground and a car standing nearby. The cyclist didn't look hurt, and Janice helped him to get up. The car driver came up to them too. The cyclist pointed at the man. He made me crash by hitting my bike with his car. But the driver said, I saw him losing control of his bike in the mirror. Then he fell to the ground, and I stopped the car to go check on him. Janice almost immediately understood who was lying. Have you figured it out? The car doesn't have side mirrors. There are also lots of things in the back seat. 
they blocked the view of the road. So the driver couldn't have seen anything in his rearview mirror either. He's lying. One wealthy businessman was famous for always wearing a white hat. But one day, he came to his office with a bunch of fruit on his head. His employees were shocked, but they didn't dare to question the man. The situation repeated the next day. On the third day, the businessman's secretary plucked up all his courage and asked what was going on. The man answered, Ah, that's because I lost a bet. I haven't fulfilled it yet, but I'll do it today. There's no need to order lunch for me. What did the businessman have to do to fulfill the bet? When he made this bet, he said, If I lose, I'll eat my hat. Detective Mark Darson suspected one man of committing a crime. He decided to stake out his house. Not too far away, he spotted an artist setting up her easel. Apparently, she was going to draw the criminal's house. At one point, the detective had to go away to the police station. He asked the girl to call him if she saw someone entering or leaving the house. She agreed. When Mark came back in the evening, the artist told him she'd seen no one. The detective immediately understood she was lying. How did he figure it out? When he was leaving, all the windows in the house were closed. But in the picture the girl drew, the windows are open. It means someone was inside while Mark was away. Take a look at this picture and try to understand which guy is Ben. Ben is the guy looking for something on the floor. He's the only one not wearing his shoes. That's because they're still in his locker. You've got a sack filled with coffee beans. You need to use this coffee to completely fill two other sacks of the same size. How can you do it? Put one empty sack into the other and fill them with coffee. A large sum of money was stolen from Mr. Green's safe. The police suspect Alan. But Alan says, I don't know anything about safes or about how to open them. I'm a simple blacksmith. The detective doesn't believe him and asks Alan to prove it. He gives the guy one job-related task. If he copes with it, he's telling the truth. Alan gets five different chains. Each of them has three links. The detective asks the guy to make one chain out of these five pieces. But he can separate and combine only three links. In no time, Alan finished this task and was released. How did he do it? Alan separated three links of one chain and used them to connect the remaining four chains. Can you move just one matchstick to make a square? Pull this matchstick up a bit. Here's your perfect square. Mr. Bernard, a famous inventor, lived on the sixth floor of an apartment building. After long months of work, he finally created a time machine. He packed lots of food, water, and other necessary stuff and was ready to test his invention. He set the timer so that the machine took him 500 years back into the past. Mr. Bernard was about to press start when a thought came to his mind. He took the mechanism and carried it to his garage that was on the first floor. Why? This way, the inventor would avoid getting hurt. Five centuries ago, there were no such high buildings. He'd simply fall to the ground from the height of the sixth floor. Look at these guys carefully. One of them lied when he said he hadn't painted the green smiley face on the fence. Which one is it? It's the guy on the left. Check out his left hand. Even though it's in his pocket, you can still spot some green paint he'd used. Bruce was walking along the beach when he found a glass bottle. The thing looked old, and the guy spent a long time trying to open it. Finally, he succeeded. To his shock, a genie rose from the bottle. I'll fulfill your three wishes, but you aren't allowed to wish for more wishes. Bruce agreed, but still managed to get more wishes. How did he do it?
His first wish was that the genie allowed him to ask for more wishes. Several birds landed on trees, one bird for one tree. But in this case, one of them didn't have a tree of its own. Then they regrouped, with two birds sitting on one tree. After this, one tree was left free. How many birds and trees are there? There are four birds and three trees. Detective Hall, one of the agency's most talented detectives, used his coded key and entered the apartment where the secret documents were hidden. To help him find them, his assistant Clark had left an encrypted note with the exact location of the documents. It looked like this. Detective Hall deciphered the message and found the documents. Where were they hidden? The note says, under the carpet in the studio. The detective just read it backwards and ignored the spaces between the words.